World Whiskey Review, brought to you by me, Man in the Sands. Come and join me. Hats off. Game on. Welcome back. Me, Man in the Sands here with you once again as we look at episode two of our series three, theme one, Entry Point Whiskies of Isla. You will have hopefully looked at my refresher episode on Isla to understand what we're talking about. This is peaty, smoky whiskey country. And hopefully you would have looked at my review of the Lagavulin 8, uh, which was the first review we looked at from the comparison of the four bottles of whiskey from Isla. Again, we are considering entry point that should be affordability alongside what is thought to be a decent, well-known distillery producing an entry point Isla. For those of the novice who are new to Isla whiskies, you may consider buying a bottle to try. For the more mature palate, you may be thinking, what can I drink that I enjoy that isn't also going to cost me a fortune, especially if I want to save to buy a wonderful complex whiskey bottle for a special occasion. And right now, I just want to buy something that I can enjoy, sat by a wintry or autumnal fire, perhaps, in some parts of the world. Because they are entry point, we are sticking with neat and naked as nature intended. Of course, you may want to add the water, the holy water, the padre, because you think you want to open it up or soften it. However, my argument is at an entry point bottle, it should be pop, pour, consume. It should not be so amazing and complicated that it benefits greatly from a drop of the holy water and goodness, never add it to ice. What it should be doing, if anything, when you add water, is probably taking away from the complexity, the little depth of complexity that it holds. So, what are we looking at today? Ardbeg, 10 year old. Ardbeg, well known, famous distillery, matching Lagavulin on the same southernmost tip of Isla. We are talking about a distillery that loves to express itself, stating that it doesn't, my statement, my words, that it doesn't tickle in the smoking process of the peat going up to dry the malt and barley, but in fact, they throw at it. They smoke it away. Now, let's get cracking. It's 46%, it's non-chill filtered. You can look at some of my other videos to understand these meanings if you do not know what that means. But for the taste itself, it doesn't matter. 46%, single malt. I will do a refresher course on blends and scotch and single malt shortly later on in the series. Uh, but there is another episode of mine earlier on in the series that looks at all of those. Now, wonderful little spray, I imagine. That's off the south coast, the cedars. Little spray hitting me, which is fantastic. Wonderful. So, shall we nose? Remember, nosing, especially if we're talking about a higher percentage, car strength, and indeed a peaty smoking number, do with care. We're not talking about wine. So, run it by the nostrils. Now, immediately, I can't believe this is a, an art bag. I, I, I can't smell um, the, the smoke of it. I don't imagine think I'm there in the fire, like with the Lagavulin. This is very subtle, this is gentle. Very gentle. Now, because it's peaty and smoky, it is worth just tipping the glass and bringing it back to release the oils and the more heavier notes. And they'll now be released. Yes. There is a release there, but again, it's still subtle. Toffee and brine, that is what I'm smelling. So let's go in for the taste. And on that note, hats off, game on.
Poor, delightful. Fizzing on the tongue, slight burn on the tongue. It's threatening, it is threatening, but it's not there. It's a heartwarming moment, but there is no burn. Isn't it interesting? My goodness. Smoke, more smoke, and a lot more smoke. It's not heavily peaty, if one was to compare to the Lagavulin. Eight, you know, where it sort of hits you with a wave of smoke and peatiness. And yet there's a lot of smoke to this. And I've got a question of, is that the, um, the finish, is it lingering and long? Or is it the smoke tricking me? Tricking me? Um, the fizzing at the front of the lips, it's still there. So I can feel it. And in fact, there's a dryness. And that'll be down to the uh, casks, just feeling that wood, if you like. And I'd even say a fresh, dry wood. It's just at the tip of the mouth. In the mouth, there wasn't much density, but there was a smoothness. It flowed like a river trickling across some of the stones and over the heads of the fishes swimming underneath. It's tranquil. It's not violent like the Legavulin 8. It is a smooth journey. It's something that makes me want to pick up the glass again and appreciate why this was actually named, uh, I want to say over two decades ago, uh, is it two decades ago? No, one decade, about 2008, I think. Sorry if I'm wrong on that, I might have to fact check. I think it's about 2008. This was named um, the winner of the uh, 12 and under Isla single malts. And in fact, it has a great reputation. I'm not sure if I concede to agree with everyone's point that this is a fabulous, fabulous uh, Arbeg. But certainly as an entry point, I can see the value and benefit. Now I'm going to go back in. Peppery. Little pepper. Little bit of toffee and brine. But overall, it's full of smoke. It really is. I can feel it holding on to me. As I'm talking, it's still in the mouth. There's a, as I breathe, a little bit of menthol, peppermint coming out. And it is inoffensive. It doesn't deliver for a mature palate something exciting. But I believe for an entry point whiskey, it's about 40 to $50 generally around the world. And you're getting a, a, an age statement, single malt from one of the world leading distilleries for that money. And I have to say, I think that's not a bad introduction to the novice to Isla whiskies. Hmm. It's so smooth. It's smooth and I'd say a bit grassy. Maybe I'm being influenced by the colour, the straw colour. I like it. I like it because it's not kicking me in the nuts like the Lagavulin does. I like it because also it's then holding on to me, but not suffocating me, but holding on. It's still in my mouth now. I'm talking to you. I'm like, whew, I feel like I'm, my mouth is a smoke chimney. But without that heaviness of the peat, it feels a lighter dram. And therefore, I do believe it could be a great entry point whiskey for the novice to Isla and maybe to progress from there.
to something with a little bit more oomph. And on that note, well, I've, I've run out. I think I'll offer myself another tipple. Because on that note, I wish you all a wonderful weekend if you see this when it's released. And when you do get to watch it, I hope you may want to comment. I've had some comments recently and I do appreciate them. In fact, one of the new subscribers to the channel from Italy, Sandro, Sandro Ciao. Sandro has uh, asked me to review again one of the whiskies I have looked at earlier. Uh, it's a Glenmorangie in the port and it's a preferred tipple of his. He feels I was a little bit harsh because I didn't uh, let it uh, breathe in water. And in fact, on reviewing my video, I did actually mention that I think it probably would benefit from breathing uh, with a little bit of the holy water. I, I imagined and I didn't do it. I'm going to come back to you, Sandro. I am going to do that for you and see what I think. Uh, thank you for that. And I encourage all of you to click subscribe, come back, comment, engage, and please do share this. Um, being in Korea, I am trying to put together a Korean language version of the summary of the whiskies that I'm just starting to do now uh, through a request. I'm very happy having been requested to do that. So to all of you, take care, slanja, and enjoy.